Hi guys, we're back again. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm River. Your eye teachers. Well, today we're going to talk about some of the vocabulary and the grammar from our packing video. Yes, if you remember, we have a video where we are packing our clothes in our suitcase. We're going to... Calabria! And in this video, we're going to talk about the grammar and expressions that we use in that video. So it's a good idea for you to check out the first video and then come back here. Check it out. What does that mean? Well, we use check out to tell someone that they should try something. For example, if I go to a really good restaurant and I like it, I might say to my friends, oh, you should check out the new sushi restaurant. It's really good. We just wanted to check out your restaurant. <laughs> or maybe if I'm watching a really good TV series, maybe on Netflix, like The Crown, I might say to my friends, oh, have you checked out The Crown? Five, four, three. Happy Christmas. 25 years ago, my grandfather broadcast the first of these Christmas messages. Today is another landmark because television has made it possible for many of you to see me in your homes on Christmas Day. Okay, Elizabeth, today when we started the video, you said, hi guys. Hi guys. And we use that expression a lot, also in our packing video. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, hi guys? Well, it's the same as hello everyone, hello people, hi everyone. It's an informal way of greeting. Yeah, I think we use it with friends. We might also say to a group of friends, guys, let's go, it's time to go, when you're talking to a group of people. Or maybe in a question, guys, do you want to go to the cinema tonight? So we use the word a lot, huh? Right. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Let's go, guys. Elizabeth. In the video, you use the word cute. What does it mean? It means something you like, cute, uh, something that is beautiful. Maybe you can have a cute baby, a cute puppy, a cute object. Check out this cute baby. He's so cute. He is cute. Really cute. Yes, he's cute, 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 cute. Yeah, I remember in the video, I thought your pajamas were cute. Yes, you liked my cute pajamas. We will be very tired. Cute! I like your pajamas. Okay. River, I remember you said that your scarf is made from wool. Yes, in the video I talked about wool. Wool is a material that comes from an animal, the sheep, and we make clothes from wool. So maybe a sweater is made from wool. It's made from wool. Wool. Right. Uh, in English, we use made from to say what material is used to make something. Like a water bottle is made from plastic. Or a table is made from wood. Yeah, a window is made from glass. Some things are made from metal, like my ring, which is made from gold. It's made from copper. You're powerless against it. Okay, guys, that was some vocabulary from our packing video. Now, we need to speak about grammar. In the video, we use have to, it's a must, to talk about things that are necessary. We need to think about a small bag. We need the health insurance and you have to go and see a doctor or 
You have to go to the hospital. I need to find information. We have to get the keys. Can't not go swimming. It's a must. Do they have the same meaning? Need to, have to, it's a must. Yes. They all express necessity. Uh, for example, tomorrow I need to go to the supermarket because I don't have any milk. So I need to buy some milk. Or perhaps you need to study English if you want to have a good job. Yeah, and it's a must to speak English if you travel to an English-speaking country right. like uh, the US, Canada, uh, Britain, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand. We all need to run. I need to know. But you have to come. You're their teacher. You have to give the presentation. You have to win. You must go. You must remember this. That's a must. Definitely. <laughs> In the video, while I'm packing, you say, bring a dress in case we go to party. Just in case we go out. Oh, in case we go to maybe a party. I also say, I'm bringing a jacket in case it's cool. I'm bringing a jacket just in case it's a bit cool. What does that mean, in case? Well, we use in case when we talk about a situation that might or could happen in the future. For example, I will bring my umbrella in case it rains. If it rains, I have my umbrella, so things are not a problem. So in case talks about possible situations in the future and what we do if they happen. Okay, this is in case of emergency. You know, just, just in case something bad happens. In case you forgot, let me remind you who I am. River, in the video, we say we are bringing many times. What are you bringing? I'm bringing a pair of black pants. I'm bringing a pair of socks. Are you bringing a t-shirt? I'm bringing a jacket. What grammar is that? Well, as some students might know, we call that the present continuous. And we use the present continuous in different situations. First of all, present continuous is formed using verb to be, am, is, are, and then ing form of the verb. We can use the present continuous to talk about something that is happening now. I am speaking and you are watching the video. So present continuous is a good grammar to talk about actions happening now. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing here? What are you doing? I'm shopping, obviously. I'm driving. We can use present continuous to talk about the future. We use present continuous to talk about something we organize, something we arrange or prepare in the future. So, for example, I might say, I'm flying to London next week. I use present continuous because before I fly to London, I must organize or prepare things. What do I prepare when I'm flying to London? You buy your ticket, you organize. Yeah, maybe I need to book the hotel. So when you have an activity that requires you need some preparation or organization, we can use present continuous. I'm flying to the tropics. What hotel are you staying at? I'm staying at the Waldorf Astoria. Also, it's possible if you have an appointment with someone. I'm seeing the doctor tomorrow. I've organized it. I've arranged it. I'm seeing a doctor next week. What are you seeing the doctor for? Or maybe if you have plans with people in your family or friends. 
I'm having dinner at my grandmother's house on Friday. We're having dinner tonight. I'm uh, having lunch at the Kremlin. Now, you need to be careful. We don't always use present continuous for the future. Here's an example which sounds strange. I'm watching TV tonight. The problem with that sentence is that you don't organize anything before you watch TV. There's no preparation. You sit down, you turn on the TV. So if there's no organizing, no preparation, no arrangement or appointment, we don't use present continuous. In those situations, you might use a different future. For example, be going to, I'm going to watch TV tonight. I'm going to watch TV until you come up with my money. Well, guys, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like. Also, we love getting your comments. That's it. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.